What if I told you there's a route that's not only better than the NC500, it's shorter than the NC500, it's got better scenery than the NC500, it's got more things to do on it than the NC500, and it's a lot easier to get to than the NC500. Well, there is, and well, I'm calling it the West Coast 500, even though it's not technically 500 miles. And that's what we're gonna go over in this video, so let's dive in. What we thought we'd do is we'd put together our favorite places and our favorite routes to go in Scotland, and we'll make it into a route which not only is shorter than the NC500, but there's just so many better things to do with what I personally believe is better scenery, better beaches, better everything. So if you're debating doing the NC500 and you haven't already done all of these places that we're about to mention, then do these first. I guarantee you will not be disappointed. Now, as a starting point with selecting Glasgow, that'll give everyone a sort of easier, accessible place to start the journey on because the route takes you along that side this is the first major city you come to on your way up to start this route the drive from glasgow upwards is pretty much spectacular it takes you through loch lomond which i personally am not a huge fan of the place of loch lomond it's very very touristy but the scenery driving through it is just breathtaking the views are phenomenal Everything is absolutely gorgeous. There's a few nice places to stop off for food on the way and plenty of little pullover points to just enjoy the views. It is spectacular. Once you've passed through Loch Lomond, there's a few beautiful little towns that you come through where you can stop off for petrol, diesel, food, just to have a little bit of wander around. It's beautiful. And then on your way up to what I would personally class as the best driving roads in Scotland, with the most ridiculous scenery. It's not stressful, it's not tiny little roads or anything, it's wide open and there's some absolutely stunning hikes. Glencoe for me is probably one of the, my favorite places in Scotland. There's so many things to just see that it's almost overwhelming. The views are just spectacular as you sort of weave your way between the big mountains. There's a load of nice hikes that take you off into them. You can also just enjoy this from the road, just driving, you don't have to get out. There's plenty of pullover spots, there's plenty of parking areas, there's tons there that you can just sit and enjoy the view, have some lunch. And then from there, once you finish at Glencoe, it's around about 20 minutes or so to get to Fort William, which is our first main stop off point. You may remember when I got these. Well, now they're on sale, men's and women's in different colors from sizes small to triple XL. Got men's cotton t-shirts in there as well, which are all top draw, dead thick, heavyweight cotton. They're all fulfilled by a local company called Zero Six. Put your order in on their website. There is a link to it in the description below and they'll fulfill the order first class. Normally get them within two or three days. So yeah, check them out. Now Fort William is of course the home of the mighty Ben Nevis. And well, it looms ominously Regardless of where you are in Fort William, you can pretty much see this major mountain just looming in the background. Obviously, it is the largest in the UK and you can get up there and enjoy the views without actually having to climb it. There's a cable car that takes you up into the Nevis Range. You can enjoy the views. There's a cafe at the top, mountain bike trails, tons of stuff, and it's well worth a visit. Um, from there though, we're gonna head west and this is where the scenery just goes mental, basically. Now the drive west from Fort William is where the viaduct is that was sort of featured in the Harry Potter films. It's where the train went round. They still put the train on, I believe, twice a day. Um, it sort of goes over the viaduct, lets out all the steam and it looks fantastic. There's a few different viewing areas. You can also do it on the train as well, which if you're a major fan, definitely worth doing. And I would, again, definitely recommend getting yourself up to the viewing point. It's not a huge amount of effort to get there. Um, the times are normally published, so you can get up there in time, sit and wait. When we went, it came from the west across to the east. Um, I'm not sure if it goes both ways or not, I'm not 100%, but it's definitely worth a view. Once you've done the Glenfinnan Viaduct, you'll continue driving west, and the views the whole way are absolutely beautiful. And then when you get to the end, you'll come to what I would class as the best beaches I've personally ever seen in the world, and I've been at well, quite a few. You would not expect them to be on your doorstep in Scotland, but they're there and they're absolutely spectacular. So for me, there's plenty of places up the coast, but Malig is, well, where it's at. A lot of the beaches are small little cove beaches with super white sand, turquoise water, rocks, mountains behind it, and they're just, the views are just beautiful, to be honest. You can see all the islands off the coast, you can see the Isle of Sky and all the rest of it, and it just looks spectacular. Every campsite I've stayed at, especially in Malig, basically the hosts have been ridiculously friendly. 
The first time we went, my registration plate was blown off because of the wind and the bloke who worked at the campsite knew the bloke from the garage who got in touch. So that first thing in the morning we could get the registration plate made up and put on, which was so helpful. The last time we went, the host was absolutely hilarious, fantastic. All of them have got generally private sort of walkways that take you down into the beaches and then you can have an explore from there. They're definitely worth visiting if you've never done this before. The beaches will literally blow your mind. They are beautiful and not what you would expect from, well, basically Scotland. From there, I would suggest staying overnight in Malig, getting up early, booking on the ferry and getting the ferry across to Armadale in the Isle of Skye. The trip is roughly 30 minutes, it's not much, and although you can drive to the Isle of Skye, I would suggest it because if you do, you will miss, well, the beautiful coast at Malig, and we will hit the road route on the way back from the Isle of Skye, so don't worry about that. Now, once you're on the Isle of Skye, there is more things to do on there than I can possibly mention in this video. There's tons of different things to go and see and do, but for me, it must, if you're only going there for one day, you must go to Quran. I'm not 100% sure if that's exactly how it's pronounced. However, for me, it is the most spectacular view I've ever seen. Every single time I go, it blows my mind. You can park up there, there's car parking literally right at the top at the viewpoint, so you don't have to hike anywhere. There's a beautiful circular hike, which we done last time we went there. And to be honest, the view is just unbelievable. If you want to get up early, you can get up there for sunrise. The sun will rise over the, from the east, which is where you're looking out onto. And it's one of my favorite views. I've, well, it is my favorite view that I've ever seen. It's just spectacular. You feel so small when you just feel the size of it up there. It's just phenomenal. So if you have only got one day on the Isle of Skye, and this, shot, this trip's going to be quite a short one, make sure that Kurang is where you go because it's beautiful. And because it is right up north, you'll see so many beautiful views on your way up there. You go past Old Man's store and plenty of other things. You'll go through Portree more than likely, which is their little town. But Kurang is where it's at. That's where you, you need to go there. You have to go there. I'll be disappointed if you don't go there. You'll be disappointed in yourself if you don't do that. Now, once you've done the Isle of Skye, then you start heading back down. I would definitely suggest coming back off the Isle of Skye across the bridge, which will then take you past Dorney. Dorney Castle is a little castle that's just sort of off into the middle of the lock, basically. It just looks like it's something off the Harry Potter film, pretty much. Just the fact it's got a little walkway that takes you across onto this castle that's been built on a bit of land that's in the lock. It just looks beautiful. And the whole drive back, to be honest, is absolutely beautiful. And then realistically, that's all you need to do. There's so many different things on this route to do. There's tons to go and see at Glencoe. There's tons to do in Fort William. There's tons to do at Malig in terms of beaches and walks. The Isle of Skye has got hundreds of different things. There's, there's the Ta Talisker Whiskey Brewery, I believe it is. And um, there's fairy pools, there's the Cullen, there's Kerrang, there's store, there's poetry, there's tons. So do your own research for what it, you enjoy doing in them areas, but I can guarantee if you do the route, which I've suggested in this video, you will not be disappointed. It's impossible to be disappointed. No matter what time of year you go, whether it's summer or winter, obviously the winter, it is Scotland. If you do it in the winter, you're probably not gonna get fantastic weather, but in the summer, Again, you're still not guaranteed fantastic weather. If you have already done this route, put a comment down below and let others know what you thought of it. If you've also done other places or have another alternative route that you would recommend, pop some information in the description below. I just feel personally that the NC500 is such a commitment time-wise and everything else, and it was good and I did enjoy it, but it's not what I expected at all, to be honest. And, there's a lot of it I would just cut out, but you can't because you're already so far up north that realistically you might as well just come back past that way anyway. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy the route and we'll see you shortly because, well, we're doing it soon and we're going to film it. So thanks for watching. <laughs>